Back of the Bus Podcast, coming to you with another comic book review. With me, as always, you know, I got my main man. I ain't saying, I'm just saying, Mr. Theo Butler. What's up? What's good? What's popping? What's cracking? What's percolating? Y'all already know how we do it. Good to see good to be in the market. Good to be in the building with you. We're currently in the middle of the Fall of X event that's happening in, uh, in the X office. So I thought it'd be a good jumping off point since we're going to cover Mortal and, and X-Men Red to, to just briefly go over um, Hellfire Gala. And then we'll probably pick this up with Immortal. How's that sound? Sound nah, good. Sound like a plan. Sound like a plan. Let's do sure. that. Some of the, the finer points, um, I guess we can start with the, the whole Miss Marvel thing, right? Emma and Scott are talking in the treehouse there in the very beginning of the book, and you know he's she's slowly releasing the information that Miss Marvel is a mutant, whatever, and that's the supposed to be one of the headlining plot lines for the Hellfire Gala. To me, all of this Kamala Khan is a mutant stuff falls flat. It fall it fell as, as flat as her death. It's just silly, man. She's been dead a week, and it, and it was so clear that like all of this was just to drum up some kind of controversy around her to make the fact that she's going to be a mutant a little bit bigger now i didn't even think they were getting that far to be honest with you i thought she'd be dead for a little bit longer than like two comic book issues of, of spider-man but I, I i didn't even think it was going to be this unified to where it seems to be coinciding directly with what is happening on the film side with the Marvels coming out in November. This is the first time in a while that is actually linked up in terms of the real life chronology. So like when the movie's coming out, then the character is adjusted in the comic books the same. This is the first time in a while. I know I'm getting a little bit in the weeds here, but I think that is something, because that's not something that we typically see, right? They don't get directly lined up just like that. It usually comes just before or after. Well, let's just look at it like this. I don't think Marvel know what they're doing when it comes to Miss Marvel, the Marvels, Captain Marvel, everything that you said. I I I really I understand why you said it. still don't lie. Get lined up on accident. <laughs> Not watch this. Okay, well you announced the movie in 2020. You said it was right. gonna be called Captain Marvel. Came back again and said the movie was gonna be called The Marvels. And mind you, this movie was supposed to come out last year. People sleeping on the fact that it was supposed to come out last year. Then they pushed it back and said, oh no, it's gonna come out in February. Well, they replaced it with Ant-Man and said, oh no, it's gonna come out in July. Well, right before the movie came out in July, they killed off Kamala Khan. Like, yeah, we don't want that Barbie smoke. Let's get up out of there. We don't want that Barbie Heimer smoke. Now, mind you, they released the Disney Plus series last year in which they changed her bigoting powers. So you got the character in the comics with a different power set than the character you just released in the MCU. Okay, well, you push the movie back again till November of this year. Low key, they talk about this movie might not come out till next year. There's the possibility that. But you released well, it. One more delay and it's done. It's flopping. Right. You released the action figures in August. So the merch that was supposed to, mind you, we're talking merch that's by and large targeted toward men. Same mistake we made with Black Panther. I seen that action figure wave. I told you, I got my, I got the Monica Rambeau out that action figure wave. What the Commander Rogers have, they only got three action figures from that wave that have anything to do with that movie. Then you talk about the fact that she's now an X-Man. Well, Kamala Khan wearing a whole damn new costume in, the, in Marvel Comics right now. Ain't got nothing to do with the damn movies. Ain't got nothing to do with the action figure. So I'm like, y'all can't even say it's lining up accidentally because she still got her bigoted power. She just happens to be a mutant. They don't know what the hell they want to do. And we probably took way too long. <laughs> they don't know what the hell they want to do with this character. Anybody associated with this character. Maybe her being a part of the X-Men is a way to get her away from that foolishness. Because I don't even know how they're going to do this in the MCU. Yeah, I, I, don't. I don't know either. I don't know. It, it seems very right. convoluted with how they plan to bring in the, the X-Men. Maybe, you know, once we the closer we get to Secret Wars, it'll come a little bit more into, into view. But... Only time will tell. So, you know, some standard Hellfire Gala stuff. The table's being set. The dignitaries are rolling in. The celebrities are there. The costumes are dope, as they usually are. Scott gets called away to the treehouse. 
Jean Grey gives the you know the 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 worst attempt at foreshadowing possible and telling Kane Marco that he should want to be an X Men. Destiny and Mystique are beeping. I was crook when Gene said you should want to be an X Men. Like, cause you know, low key, you know, we didn't see Kane Marco go through his his uh not reincarnation, but his uh reinvention, what, re, re, his redemption arc per se. Mm -hmm. not, you know, you Charles Xavier's half brother. We've never seen you officially be an X Men. You know what? I remember reading about you when I was a kid. Maybe before I kick the bucket, you could be an X Men. Anything possible. That's what Kevin Garnett said. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, for sure. Kamala and Xavier share a conversation. Uh, it's coming pretty clear that Kamala, you know, coming out as a mutant and all of that is an attempt to try to curry, cover, uh, you know, public favor. If you've been reading any other X titles, you know that Orcus has been, you know, planting coordinated attacks, not just physically, but in the media and, 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 and things of that nature, trying to sow dissent in between humans and the mutants. And so now it seems like they're trying to use Kamala Khan as a bit of a prop right like hey look we got one of your favorite humans she and she's also an inhuman but now she's a mutant too right if y'all cool with her be cool with us which always kind of feels a little lazy it, it feels like uh blacks for trump is what it feels like um <laughs> but it, 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 they're they're doing their best to try and i guess fight in the court of public opinion i don't know why we haven't just moved to let's wipe these mugs off the planet completely like with no discrimination i want i want all five of my omegas i want charles xavier i want y'all to go find out wherever the hell cassandra nova is right and we're we're going to cripple them to the point of no return i think that's where we're headed if there's any hope for x-men at all that's what has to happen by the end of all this but it seems like they're still playing the political game right now. So let me see if I got this right. We got a guy, a writer, basically programming everything Peter Rasputin let come out of his mouth. Like, literally. This dude has Peter Rasputin doing whatever. So you mean to tell me, between Charles Xavier, whose daughter reached out to him from across the galaxy, she reached out to him across the galaxy, he received it. So you mean to tell me between Charles Xavier, Emma Frost, and Jean Grey. And I have they said Emma is on Omega level impact? I know. We know Jean is. We know Jean is. So you mean to tell me at no point in time has it, it I, I know I get it. We got the red triangle protocols. This is the new the new fashion trend and everything like that. So you mean to tell me they couldn't mind white anybody? What, in Orcus? In Orcus. Uh, well, I wouldn't expect that to, to make everything go away because you'd have to mind wipe too many people. Even even with that, though, mind wipe the people so that they would see Orcus as the enemy. Like, oh, you mean the humans. Like, yeah, but, but Charles Xavier, Xavier, it would take Charles Xavier, number one, to do that. It would take Charles Xavier... And Charles Xavier is never going to physically dominate every human on the planet, even though he could. He's never going to do that. Not every human. I'm talking about the key ones, the ones that do business with Orcus. The, the influencers. Ones. Yeah, yeah. If you were to eliminate they, the Orcus, is Baltimore. I think that's the point. They've they've cur they've got the curry in favor. They have the politicians. They have all the leaders of industry. They have remnants of Shield involved in Orcus. So, you know what I'm so saying? What? So like they draw everybody in from aim, damage control. Any place you may have a little bit of, of you know, fight back for us, they cut right. the mutants off at the legs. What up happening? You got for you having so many military strategies on your in your in, in the mutants, you got out flank. Bobby DaCosta, Robert DaCosta, that's a billionaire. He's a businessman. You got out flank. So you let the humans that don't like mutants outdo you when it came to money outdo you with strategy and mind you you had something to balance the playing field but you also had money too i get it it's a story it's a plot but as mutants to your point remember you said you don't want to see them go back to great mark and lane and everything like that mm -hmm. there was no way this should have ever happened 
you're supposed to be, you're, you had more money, you didn't use it. You had the strategy, military strategy, because they got people from the future. You didn't use it. Then you had people that have abilities and you didn't use it. What you did was you just sat there and got played by the humans. That's what that's what that was. Pretty much. And so right in the middle of the uh, the gala there, the Avengers get a notice that Captain America is under attack and his whereabouts are unknown. That prompts all the Avengers to fly out pretty quickly and Rogue joins them as well. You know, she's an honorary member or a, a like a like a dormant member of the, the Avengers, you know, for her time there. They're beginning to vote on X-Men, the new X-Men team. And look who we got here. Look who we got here, man. Look who they, they hooked us up with for the new X-Men team. All right, we got we got Cannonball. All right, all right. We got Talon. The, the the version of X-23 that got left in the vault. That's she going by Talon now. Got my boy Prodigy, super smart. Frenzy, super strong. Uh, Dazzler's in there. Jubilee, my boy Kane Marco. You would have been somewhat of an interesting team to, to, to follow. Did you say Sink? Sink? Sink is obviously the leader. He's the holdover. He didn't get voted in this time, but he's the one staying to be the new leader. Damn, man, all of that would have been nice to see if Nimrod didn't absolutely come in and wreck the whole show. I mean, wreck it. On impact, he splatters Frenzy's head, splits Dazzler in half. Looks like Talon and uh, and Sink get out of the way, but no such luck for Cannonball because he's split in half as well. In an instant, says he dropped in from the Earth's atmosphere to avoid detection. Why? After... Mystique. Oh, yeah, and he smashes Jubilee's face in. It, it is absolutely brutal. He does her d disgusting. But anyways, why after Mystique couldn't stop Nimrod from coming online? Did we not? Like, we did the mother mode thing. That That's what kicked off this entire, this entire thing. Was that mission with the original X-Men, you know, your, 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 your Kurt Wagner, Wolverine, Cyclops, Jean Grey, uh, uh, Monet St. Cour, all of them going to the mother mode, tossing that thing into the sun, right? That's that's the left. That's the lengths we were willing to to make sure Nimrod didn't come on. And then we implanted Mystique in there to try and sabotage it. Because once again, Nimrod is the ultimate threat of, in, in his eventual evolution and ascension is the ultimate threat to mutant life. When did that stop becoming a thing? Like, they was just like, oh, he's online now, so fuck it. I guess we'll ignore it. Like, once he's online, you should be constantly, like, every second of every day worried about the prospect of Nimrod, right? Because that's what y'all have been telling me for the last five years was the ultimate downfall of the mutants. Why did we, why, why, he just been sitting around? He just been chilling? We well, did kill, he killed Cable a couple uh, issues of X-Men ago. Uh, but for, for the most part, man, my man has been able to hide. There has been much pressure. Uh, a big battle does ensue. Uh, but ultimately, Nimrod has all of their numbers. And it seems like he's going after the Omega Mutants first. Karima and uh, Mr. Sinister, the Club Sinister, or Dr. Stasis is what he was going by. They both come in. They kind of reveal that they were the ones behind it. Surprise, surprise. I mean, that wasn't very, wasn't a big thing. They have been lacing the controlling drugs. I don't know if we talked about that. I, I think that's come up in the board or in the red. Um, I think my thing is, is I'm like, I, I don't know. It, it, the storyline suck. I'm gonna just, I'm, I'm like Mr. Smith now. The storyline suck because I'm like, y'all brought Sinister in. So you mean tell me all them telepaths with nobody monitoring Sinister? I, I did. I thought it was gonna be more intricate than that. Like when we got to the thing about there being multiple Sinisters, Sinister clones. I thought it was going to be a little bit more intricate than, oh, it wasn't our Sinister, but it was, it was one of them. Like, I thought maybe, like, it was going to be some, like, interchanging things. I think they showed us very early that, like, we didn't really know what Sinister that was when they showed up to recruit him. I mean, there was 30 of them in the room. So we weren't really sure who was who or, or how to keep track of who m may have taken over or what have you. So, like, from that standpoint, there really wasn't any reason for me to kind of retcon Sinister and show that he, he he had these clones that he rebooted, rebooted right right after his death. 
it is now oh uh, uh, well we'll get to mother righteous we'll, we'll get there but that that's a whole thing right that's yeah, that's the whole thing the thing uh, is, but, what you're asking me to do is, and not you, you're asking me to believe that. I, I can believe that Xavier didn't scan Sinister. But you're expecting me to believe that Emma Frost didn't keep tight because she don't trust people. It, it, it just feels like at a certain point, <laughs> they just took their eye off the ball, which is weird when you started a mutant society to ascend above all the other people on the earth. Like, I don't, when did that stop being the motivation? When did, when did us ascending over mutant or humans so to guarantee our survival and outlast AI not become the point of all of this? Like, it seems like we have gotten much more interested in coexisting after you removed yourself from society. I don't like that. I'm still, I'm, I'm confused. Even to the point that Forge at this Hellfire Gala, was going to be re revealing some sort of technology that ended homelessness. Brother. Great. That is wonderful. Y'all got your own problems. You got your own problems, bro. You got the children in the vault down there sitting inside of a bubble. And if it ever bursts, you know, it just, it, it seems like we're, we're off okay. you've, you've raised the stakes. You raise the stakes, and we always do this with the X-Men. You raise the stakes. Okay, so they got a planet and then they got an island. Like, let's just say what it is. They got a planet and they got an island. Okay, well, you just, you know, we, well, we'll talk about when we review Immortal X-Men and everything like that. But they got an island, they got a planet. What you finna do with them? Like, what after this storyline, and you know, the guy that's over Avengers. And he left them in a pretty good spot when he, <laughs> as the group editor. What, what you finna do with the X-Men? Like, where they finna be? Like, you, as you said, you cannot put them back in Grey Malkin Lane. So where we go from here? Because they already got a planet in the out. Earth, they gonna have a whole, <laughs> like, where you go from here? You gonna kill off half of them? You gonna kill off most of them? You didn't done this before. Yeah. You done this okay. before. Let's speed up a bit, right? So Modoc and Dr. Stasis have been lacing the Krakoan drugs to put a, a, a kill, it's kind of a kill switch in there that would turn the, the humans into like murderous zombies, yeah. uh, you know, uh, clones essentially. Um, so that is what has Charles Xavier essentially by the short and curlies. Nimrod absolutely eliminates Kane Marco, which kind of undermines the whole you know, Sidorak thing, but we'll leave that where it's at for a moment. Jean Grey begins to get control of the situation. <laughs> Jean, Jean Grey gets control of the situation. She halts everyone from fighting. She starts explaining to the humans that this was Orcus and yada, yada, yada. We're going to get you out of it. If we don't stop now, I'll destroy all of you. And then someone else who's just been kind of peekabooing into different books ever since she ran off in Inferno, Miss Moira pops in with a knife laced with Blythe's will. Now, if you know, have no idea what Blythe's will is, don't worry about it. It was some random shit that came out of Teeny Howard's um, um, whatever, Captain Britain or whatever the hell she's doing over there right now. Inconsequential. It's poison. It, it helped escalate uh, Jean Grey's death and, and kind of draining her powers. So Moira is exacting her revenge as Scott is burning at the treehouse for that call that he received earlier. Right? So that was a trap. It seems like Orcus was well prepared for all of this. They had every eventuality kind of laid out. And even then they, 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 were, they were not strong enough to complete this assault had they not kind of gotten around Charles first, right? right. Letting, letting Charles know that there were humans at risk was kind of like the checkmate before they even started fighting. Right. Because now, now I can use the most powerful telepath in the universe. I can use him. It, it, like, fighting be damned, get your punches in, but eventually you gonna walk through them gates because he's gonna tell you to. Right. And that's what happens, right? Moira puts a knife to his neck, tells him to stop his children, and that is exactly what he does. And he proceeds to force all of the mutants out of, where are they at? Mikan's? Mikan's Island? Um, 
through the Kunkoan gates, right? And he's being told that they're being exiled off to off world to Araka. So a lot of them resist, or at least the ones that know how to resist, that were personally trained by Xavier with the Red Triangle Protocol. It got very descriptive in all of this. Um, they got a lot more detail about the Red Triangle Protocol than even we got when it was going on with, with Storm and, and Xavier and X-Men Red. But in any case, it, 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 it seems like they got most of the mutants out. And then it was just, you know, the, the elite of the elite, the stragglers, the ones that could fight the the telepathy from Charles. 250,000. 250,000. Quarter million of them. Quarter mil. Another thing that's interesting is that as Jean Grey is dying out, she is talking to Firestar and she's implanting her as a mole into Orcus, which is probably the thread that is most consequential out of all of this, out of all the subplots that were birthed out of Hellfire Gala. Firestar being implanted as a mutant traitor um, is probably the most interesting thing. And the and the only through line that leads the mutants back to prosperity, honestly. Because the deeper, the longer this goes, the deeper she gets embedded within Orgus, it, right. it'll be a bigger downfall for them so that we can put the mutants back at their place. Right, that's right. just me speaking as an optimistic reader. Uh, I don't know if that's what they're doing, but what ifs. Let's talk about Mother Righteous real quick because she's a she's a key player in all of this. Turns out, not only is she a a clone that was created by the original Nathaniel Essex, but she's a clone of his wife. Now, if I didn't you know swim in comic books every day that I'd be picking up and not reading, um, I probably would have read the um, there was a hold on let's see if I got it here the Sinister Four before the fall of x i would have read this and i would have gotten all that information right that you know this man has been kind of looking for her for a very long time and he still seeks her love which makes him very pliable and i don't think mother righteous is in this to see orcus win i think she's in it for power oh yeah right? definitely. her definitely. goal is to be at that dominion level that sinister was trying to ascend to that mutantum is trying to ascend to in general but there's somebody already there. Are we going to see that get played out? Like, is, are they going to pay that off? Or is somebody there? Are they, do we really think they're going to pay that off? Well, it's somebody there. So we got, we got at some point, they got to get to it. Man, I, I bet that's it right now. I bet that's it right now. I could be okay, wrong. Okay, okay. All right. So the mutants are getting exiled. They're cussing Charles out. Uh, Scott's dying. All oh, very tragic scene. That Blyce will is an mf -er, boy, because it, it burned everything except for Jean's clothes and her hair. That's odd. It burned your skin and not your hair? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Talk about what Buddy did to Iceman. That was, that, was, that, was, that, was, that was tough. Yeah, Nimrod, he, he put something in his body and melted him down. Melted him down. That My dog said I was sorry. Like, bro, what are you apologizing for? I don't think this is your fault. <laughs> Exodus gets the five out, right? He gets Hope and everybody else through the gates. Did Exodus get the five out? Yes. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Because they... We talk about it. We talk about it. Yeah, let's jump ahead a little bit. So, the the uh, the last of the... Um, last of the mutants that were able to resist Charles and not walk through the gates uh, was comprised of... Well, there's quite a bit of people here, but I'll, I'll name a few that we probably know. Uh, Lourdes, the 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 member of the Hellfire Club that was resurrected like last year. Uh, who else is consequential to this? Oh, Katie Pride, right? Because she turns everybody, well, seemingly everyone intangible as they're escaping. And then Lourdes transport teleports them out. As that is happening, Lourdes gets shot. She dies in the name of Krakoa, even though she'd been living there for like two weeks. They're staying in the basement of the Hellfire Club. That's where they're hiding out. Anything else consequential? Oh, now that um, the gates have been shut off, right? Because they found that out. They tried to walk right back and lead an assault. The gates have been shut down. They've hacked the technology. Remember, we uh, we talked about this uh, the last time we did Immortal X-Men, that uh, the, the, the Karima went and got the technology from Hoda Korcher to hack the Krakoan gates. I didn't think them old ladies wished ill on Krakoa, but you know, it is what it is. 
It is what it is. Um, yeah, yeah, it is what it is. Emma can't use the gates, which means the person who couldn't use the gates before they was messed up can now use the gates. Yeah, she can. Which is Shadow Cat, which is Mrs. Miss Pride, right? Mm -hmm. So Boy, she's going to become somewhat of like a super agent. That that's going to be a that's going to be a sight to see. I remember when she learned how to become Shadow Cat. That is mm -hmm. not that. Ooh, ooh. I saw that scene when she took everybody apart. That that was brutal. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if that's in her first comic. You know, Shadow Cat. Well, you should see what they what she did to him in the new X Men book. Well, maybe we'll mention that later. I, I, I think but, I did. I think I did. did. Oh, oh, is that what you was talking about? Yeah, yeah, no, it, it, she got, she got live for sure. She got live. Um, oh, so right after Sinister slaughters all the humans that he promised that he would save if Charles got the mutants off the Earth, uh, Moira is going in for the kill shot, but she's talking too damn much, and Rogue comes in, swoops him away. They're headed back to Krakoa. En route back to Krakoa, Charles is scanning for all the mutants that he, you know, thought he sent there, and they gone. He can't feel them nowhere. Charles is in such a deep depression. He feels like he sent 250,000 mutants to their death, to the meat oh, grinder. He think he sent them to Rocco. And, 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 and boy, and boy, well, no, now he thinks he just straight up killed him. But uh, hold on, let me see if I can find the book where my boy was looking rough. Madonna told from the Good God, fam. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was going to introduce you to our new sponsor, Manscaped. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just playing. I wish. Hey, no, holla at us, though, for real, because, I mean, I would do an ad read in the middle of a comic book. Like, if he don't look like Patrick Stewart in that picture, the football boy, look. <laughs> Never look like Patrick Stewart in that book. Um, So that's kind of the, the layout of what happened in Hellfire Gala. That's where we're at. Orcus is on top. They are blaming the, the mutants for the human lives that were lost at the Hellfire Gala still sowing misinformation everywhere about and they're currently hunting the the remnants that are left over so when we that's kind of the table that we pick up on here at the at the end or at the beginning of, of immortal x-men to kind of set the stage 